With us now, CBS News legal analyst Jack Ford and our senior correspondent John Miller. Good morning. Good I'm morning. glad you both are here so we can kind of work through this. Jack, why not read him as Miranda writes? The idea is this, when they talk about a public safety exemption. When you give people those warnings, oftentimes people decide, well, in that case, I'm not going to talk then. You've told me I have the right not to, and I'm going to take you up on that. Here, the government, basically law enforcement, is saying it's more important for us to find out if there's a danger out there, an urgency, an immediate danger. So we're willing to roll the dice on maybe not being able to use what he says to us, depending upon what a court said, in order to make sure that we get information that allows us to protect So there's him. a risk here, though. There Jack. is a risk, Anthony. Absolutely. You know, they're saying, we think we have the justification to do this. Down the road, a court might look at it. I don't know. But they might look at it and say, you know what? You, you didn't. Too many days went by, or there wasn't a, a evidence that had been immediate threat. So we're not going to allow you to, to use what you gleaned from this conversation. Which John suggests, what you were reporting earlier, why they want to communicate with him, because they want to find out if there's anything else out there, right? I mean, if there is a storage area that's filled with explosives, if there's a bomb factory sitting around, if they say, well, we were two guys, but there's two other guys that are launching a plot next week, that's stuff that is more important to get out and get on top of than it is to figure out how will we use this in the case. And the idea is if he, cooper if he cooperates pre-Miranda, he's likely to cooperate post-Miranda. This has been used in two big cases here. The underwear bomber, remember on Christmas Day over Detroit, they did an extensive interview with him without Miranda and got a lot of information. And there was a roiling debate as to whether that was going to be admissible at trial. And he pled guilty. The same with the Times Square truck bomber, Faisal Sazad, who also pled guilty. So at some point, there will be this test in a terrorist case. Is there a time limit on this, Jack, in terms of? No, you know, Anthony, it's, it's case sensitive. Uh, in one case, they might say your time limit is within six hours. There was no longer the immediate urgency. Here, they could easily say, look, as John said, there's all sorts of evidence of other bombs out there. He hasn't been able to communicate for the last couple of days. So I would think if I'm the prosecutor, I'm going to argue this is elastic. And right now, we're still working within the time frame that allows us to claim this public safety exemption. That's what I'm going to say if I'm the prosecutor. Okay, let me ask you this. So now we have a number of Republican senators saying, let's declare him an, an enemy combatant. Why do that? Yeah, you know, I think there's an, an emotional element to that, where people just feel that somehow that's a better protection for us in the legal system. I don't know that legally that's in fact so. I, mean, I know there are certain situations where clearly somebody falls within the category of an enemy combatant. Here I think you could make a very good argument if I'm the defense attorney, even if I'm the prosecutors looking at this, say, the prosecutor saying, we can do this. Mm -hmm. Leave this in the justice system here. We can handle this. An American citizen on American soil, I think that's the argument you'll see. There's, there's also a political debate versus a practical debate. Right. And if you just take the politics out of it, and you say, you could try him in, in Guantanamo in a military tribunal or here. Since 9-11, yeah. the federal courts have tried 500 terrorism cases, including a dozen very significant ones uh, with an 89% conviction rate. Guantanamo in 10 years has tried four. Two have been reversed. And one of the defendants, that was a case I testified in, is back in Yemen living at home. So, so it's, they're more efficient. The federal courts have been more, more successful? Statistically, incredibly more efficient and successful. And John, the fact that they didn't meet, read him his Miranda rights and that this is a public safety exception at this point, that's something that decided all the way at the top of the U.S. government, right? All the way at the top. And, and it is in each case. And the people doing the More question, than the Attorney General. Yes. The President of the United is, States. This, yeah. this, is, this, is a, this is a decision that is done at the highest levels. And the people doing the questioning are not just, you know, the FBI agents on the case. This is the HIG, the High Value and Detainee Interrogation Group. This is what they do. All right, Jack Ford and John Miller, thanks.